Back with more Buffy, this is episode 18 of season 7. Very excited to be returning to the show. Um, obviously with the watch order being how it is, um, there's been five episodes of Angel in a row. So it's been, you know, about a month, just over a month I think since Buffy. So excited to carry on, see what's going to be happening next as we get into the final five episodes of the show, which is terrifying. Um, and yeah, I'm excited because it's Buffy, uh, but also... Um, how the last episode ended off, um, it had a lot of tension, obviously, with, um, Spike and, uh, Wood, all that kind of coming out, and then having a bit of a disagreement, and obviously Buffy's in the mix with that tension as well. There's also tension with Buffy and Giles with how the episode ended off, and Willow went off, um, after getting a call from Fred, and obviously we saw how that all played out on Angel, and I have faith Willow's brought a certain someone back with her to Sunnydale, um, given, you know, the dialogue in those Angel episodes. So, I think there's a lot to be excited about going into this one. You know, it, it's, I'm getting sadder and sadder knowing we're getting towards the end, but it's also going to be very, very exciting, I think. So, yes, without further ado, let's get into the next one. <gasps> well, that was, uh... Thank God you were there. That's Nathan that Fillion, right? Oh my god! Oh, is Nathan Fillion evil? Okay. Nathan! Badly. We have to get her to the hospital. Yep. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, I can't wait for her to see Buffy again. Ah! I could die tomorrow. And I'd never be with a man. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh. I've never been with a man before either. Colleen. I've never been with her in front of a man before. Are you dreaming? Oh <laughs> my Jesus Christ, Sander. <laughs> I'll be right out. Got a, a leg cramp. Mm hmm. Your leg, girl. Girl's been gutted like a catfish. Yeah. You've been there, done that. You must be faithful. Yeah. Oh, I was gonna say they've never met, really, have they? Because she was in Buffy's body. I performed. <laughs> I performed way before you did. <laughs> Training. Sorry, Faith. I didn't realize that was you. Oh, God. He has a soul. Oh, he's like Angel? No. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> he fights on my side. Nice to have you back. I mean, it is. Whoa. I'm not sure she means it, but house. it's fair. Yeah. We have a new house guest. Hey. Got oh, a spare yeah. bed for a one fugitive? Is there some nice hotels that welcome tried to kill your sister types? Check it out. Brats all woman size. Look, I need to get to the house. That's so weird that like, they know each other, but they, we've never seen it. Charles is part of a plan to kill me. For Buffy's own good. Well, that makes me feel better about me. <laughs> Ray is my blood. My God, he's giving me Robert Patterson vibes from um, you know, Devil all the time. <laughs> I suppose there was a reason why I never spent too long in one parish. Probably because you're evil and crazy. All this time, all the work I've done for you, blowing up the council, organizing the Ray Charles Brigade, and... Oh, that was him. Woman's first sin. I offer her an apple. What can she do but take it? She might not like apples. Faith. Her name alone invokes awe. Faith. Oh a set of principles <laughs> of beliefs upon which you're willing to devote your life. For years and years, or to be more accurate, months, Faith fought on the side <laughs> of the What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh my god. Faith has a history not to be taken lightly. She's mm. a killer. 
the trouble is no one here has kind of seen how much she's grown really so can't really hold that against them so we're good absolutely you're fired <laughs> effective immediately you're firing me well, i just refrain from kicking your ass you gotta focus on the fight some of these girls haven't even been tested in battle then i guess maybe you should test them <laughs> the mission's what matters yeah there'll be time to live when it's all over you craving a moment alone in the deck look in the bum one. Oh. Mm. Hey, to each his own, man. In case you're feeling all dust happy again after your long incarceration. Well, not if you're all repenty. It takes the fun out of it. I want these two to be best friends. <laughs> you had the power to walk away any time. Nothing to stop you. I stopped me. Yeah. I got dangerous for a while. You've both changed a lot. You over it. Every guy's got some whack fantasy. Scratch the surface of any granola type dude. Naughty nurses and horny cheerleaders. I figure if you can't beat them, join them. Mm. Just Spike had a robot something. made. I may have said a few things. Like you could drive me in a gallop to my knees buckled, squeeze me till I pop like warm champagne. Oh, he remembers it then. The kind of thing I meant forget. Yeah. <laughs> She'd never throw down like that. Oh, you have been away. So you can tell me little Miss Tightly wild has been getting her naughty on. Not of late. <laughs> Wow. You just know all the cool vampires. <laughs> yeah. Hey, aren't you usually at work about now? He said... I have something of yours. Mm. I'm getting it back. And you guys, are coming with me. Quite the training exercise. <laughs> so you got, like, her diary or something. Because then he's a dead man. You got your urges. Oh, it's got hers. Oh, no, it's got... Mm -mm. It's not wrong. She's dressed all in white. You know, all in black. <laughs> yeah. Just human. <sighs> Ooh. As for following, well, that seems to be what they do best. Oh, my God. So he was just, like, <laughs> going around killing people. You're my most powerful weapon, Will. I know you can keep them safe if anything happens. No, no, man. Hell yeah. In the town. We have to have more time. Giles, we don't have time. And you're not going into battle. I need you to stay behind with the others. Help the girls who still need a teacher. Oh, don't hurt my heart this way. Why did you come back? Willow said you needed me. Didn't give it a lot of thought. Do you... Am I getting you want me to be not here? She needs all the help she can get. How is he? Better. I had to do this whole magical mind walk with him. You are an angel's mind? Buffy. In a way. I hope Angel shows up again before the show ends. Let's get the cavalry. And then May. Brain, heart, eyes. Everything's got eyes. Matthew Broderick can kill Godzilla. How tough is he? <laughs> Never. Matthew Broderick did not kill Godzilla. Oh my god. He killed a big dumb lizard. That was not the real Godzilla. Okay, Buffy doesn't care how many of us she puts in Let danger. Let me tell you something about Buffy. In fact, you should all listen to this. Uh, we kind of were. I've been through more battles right. with Buffy than you all can ever imagine. You think Buffy's all about the kill, then you take the little bus to battle. I've seen her, Aww. and this time, not literally. And I'm telling you right now, she cares more about your lives than you will ever know. You gotta trust her. She's earned it. <laughs> Andrew. <laughs> so shut the fuck up, Rona, whatever your name was. Be careful of the alcohol. Well now. You girls are just burning with righteousness, aren't you? Oh my god, this guy. Oh you poor thing. Slayer must indeed be powerful. Oh. So, what else you got? Huh. 
No, the alcohol. No. Oh. Rude. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this, but please kill Nathan for the end. Oh. I mean, was that the one with the terrible accent? Because it's not the worst thing. <gasps> Holy shit! Nathan! Oh my god. There once was a woman. And I'll kill them all. She? I told you it had a happy ending. Oh my god. Okay, really great episode. Really enjoyed it. Um, it was cool to see Nathan Fillion turn up. That was unexpected. Um, all the Firefly actors, I guess, are just being brought back into the Buffyverse, which I'm here for. Um, we've got Gina Torres and Angel, and now we have Nathan Fillion, which is amazing. Um, I really like Nathan Fillion, basically every single thing I've ever seen him in. So it was really interesting to see him in this and to see him play, you know, an evil guy, I would say. Huge Robert Patterson vibes in The Devil all the time. Um, you know, Preacher, exactly the same accent and everything. It would be funny if Robert Patterson kind of... I don't know, watch clips of this for his accent and stuff. Because it was basically, they spoke exactly the same way. I found that very bizarre and quite entertaining, really. Um, so, yeah, Caleb is his name. Um, shenanigans are his game. Yeah, it was cool to see a villain be brought in and this person brought in and being influenced by the first who we didn't already know. Um, so we've kind of seen lots of people be like haunted by the first and all these visions of their dead loved ones and you know Andrew was a character we already knew when they introduced him being like taunted by fake Warren and everything so to see someone we hadn't seen yet and the fact that the first has really been playing a long game they've been influencing um, Kayla for a long time and it seems like he was already not the best person and kind of you know using abusing people um, potentially even murdering people. It seemed like he was already pretty crazy and then the first found him, which is probably maybe why the first even targeted him in the first place because he could be used like that and the fact that he's fully aware that the first isn't like his god but he's still kind of worshipping them and following their orders and stuff and trying to find god in other things. It's, it's interesting, you know, they could have made him, you know, any profession or any random guy. So the fact that they've made him a preacher I think is quite interesting. Um, given, you know, what Buffy's had to kind of go through and face as well, like being in heaven, being ripped out of that, you know, what that would do to kind of your faith and your belief in God and everything, um, the idea of heaven and hell. So to see her in like this final battle seemingly have like a preacher involved in that, I, I, I quite like um, what you could pick apart in that. I feel like there's there's some really interesting stuff there that they could delve into. Um, and he's like super strong and stuff, it would seem. So I don't know how that came about, and I'm sure we're going to get a bit more backstory with him and explain how he can, you know, easily handle a Slayer. Um, but the fact that he is that powerful makes me think he's going to be sticking around for a while, at least until the end of the season. Um, obviously, he can't stick around beyond that because the show will be done. But um, any amount of Nathan Fillion is okay with me. Um, so I'm happy to see him stick around for a bit longer yet. So I'm glad he wasn't just like in one episode and then they killed him or whatever. He is going to be, I think, the uh, you know an agent of the first that they can actually beat up. That's not a bringer, you know. So that was interesting, and he's already made quite the impact bringing him in. You know, it's probably risky to bring a villain in with five episodes to go, but a it's Nathan Fillion, so you're kind of like, okay, this is serious now. I will listen to this guy, and he um, squashed one of Xander's eyes, so. Damn, that, that's an impact, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he, uh, 
the start is going to go on. I mean, I, I, I prefer him to leave other people's eyes alone from now on. I feel like one's probably enough for him. You know, I'd rather he didn't take any eyes at all, to be honest, but what's done is done. But yeah, it's interesting to see um, the first influence on someone just on the outside world who wasn't actually drawn into this previously and the fact that he's been promised for so long it, it would seem to like meet the Slayer and he was really kind of enthralled by the first using Buffy's image. He's like, oh, this is what she looks like. And exactly what they've promised him could be interesting to learn a bit more about. And he was the one who blew up the Watchers Council ages ago, I feel like that was. So obviously this has been a very long running thing and it does make you think about how many people all over the world are the first actually influencing that we don't even know about. Like they could just be causing problems for all sorts of potentials all over the world that haven't even heard of Buffy and anyone to kind of go to for salvation. So I really like that idea. It just makes the first plans just feel a bit bigger because obviously they're talking about all oh, the end of the world and everything like that. But all the action is kind of taking place in Sunnydale, so it doesn't feel quite that big because. Um, we stopped seeing, you know, a lot of people all over the world and all these different countries be like hunted down by the bringers and stuff. Um, so it just makes their plan kind of feel a bit more worldwide again, which is nice. So I like that. Um, and yeah, I'm intrigued to see what role he will play continuously. I feel like it's just, he's a physical threat that they can actually beat up as opposed to the first two are, you know, not corporeal things. So yeah. Interesting character to bring in, but he certainly made the impact and it's great to see Nathan Fillion in Buffy. That was not something I expected, so very pleasantly surprised. This show is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and yeah, we had also the idea of like, almost like fetishes and impulses once in this episode, which I thought was quite something. We had Xander's dream near the start, um, you know how he imagined all the girls pillow fighting or some of them being like, oh, I've never been with a man, I've never been with a, another woman in front of a man, all of that. Um, Caleb seems to have his own little, you know, impulses and stuff as well. He even talked to the first in that guise of that girl about it. So I feel like he was just practicing, like, like recreating hit people he's killed and stuff in the past and the first was just going along with it, because why not? Um, so that was quite dark, really. Because uh, the fact that he was asking them, you know, can you be this person next, means they'd have to be dead in order for the first to do that. And I feel like he understands how the first works. So it seems he's killed a lot of people, um, even before the first maybe even got in contact with him. So, yeah, we had that. We had um, Faith talking about her past relationship. And when she saw, like, the shackles and stuff where Spike sleeps, she assumed, you know, they were kind of a thing as well. Uh, so that, that was kind of a running theme with that throughout the entire episode, which... Um, I guess it was kind of odd, but also works because the characters were talking about it a lot. And I think it was fun how they used that with Xander's dream at the start. And then you see his um, speech about Buffy near the end of the episode and him really standing up, getting into the fight and then losing his eye. I mean, that was just rude when they talked about it earlier in the episode, didn't they? Um, he's talking about, you know, what parts to go for. If there's tentacles and stuff, just ignore them go for the center, everything has eyes, and then he loses an eye. That's just rude, goddamn foreshadowing. Um, but yeah, I liked how they kind of used, it was the best and worst of Xander in this episode almost. You know, it felt very season one, two, three, Xander having that dream. But you know, people have those dreams, so you know, I'm not holding it against him, it's just how Xander is. Um, so it reminded me very much of the days when he'd make a lot more inappropriate comments, like, all the goddamn time. Um, and then you see him give that speech about Buffy and everything, and you just see how far he's come, how much he's matured. That was easily one of my favourite Xander moments, that whole speech. I love that. Um, and to see Buffy's face when she walked in and saw that, and saw his friend coming to her defence, because I think for a while now she's had people kind of doubting her and turning on her a bit. So it must have been really lovely for her to actually hear someone defend her like that, not even knowing that she was there. So that was a really lovely moment, I liked that a lot. Because we had, you know, one of my favourite Xander moments is the season four premiere when he's talking about, you know, I always think, what would Buffy do? And I like that he's still holding on to that. Um, so that was really lovely, I liked that. And again, it's a moment that you really feel the impact of because we've spent seven seasons watching those two and their friendship evolve and change and grow through the years. Um, so that impact I felt was really earned and Xander talking about, you know, all the battles I fought with Buffy that you can't even imagine and she's, you know, fought back every single time, she's always come back. She's died twice and she's still standing. Um, 
all those chumps worrying about dying once. Buffy's died twice, get some perspective. Uh, so I loved him coming to her defence like that, that was really great, because it was kind of frustrating, the potentials in them. I mean, I, I still don't hate them as much as a lot of people seem to um, in the comments, which is fair enough, I can see why they're a bit of a drag at times, and they're, they're having a few episodes when I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm rooting for you all to die, quite frankly. Um, and I got a bit of none in this one. <laughs> uh, it's just, like, I get you didn't ask to be a potential, you didn't ask to, you know, be put in line to be a slayer. I completely understand that. It sucks, it's a shitty situation. But to then seek shelter and protection with Buffy and then be like, oh, you're doing it wrong, you're protecting us wrong. Well, you fucking do it then, you step up. What, what do you want to do? You know, if you're not happy with your protection, go off into, you know, the world on your own. See how long you last. They're going to kill you within minutes. Like, it's a bad situation, but... Ugh, like, what were you expecting to happen? Like, she's just going to shield you forever and then the first is just going to pack up and go away and, I don't know, ship off to Disneyland or something. They're not, are they? They're going to fight and they're going to kill you. They're going to attack eventually. And you're standing around listening to Andrew talk s stories about Faith battling Spock and... You know, listening to all these stories about this other Slayer who's just turned up, um, learning all about her, when she is making the choice to not even go near any of you and is isolating herself from you. So you don't need to know that much about her anyway, really. You just know that she's a Slayer. She can kick ass. That's all you need to know. But they're just stood around listening to that, gossiping about God knows what, moaning about Buffy, moaning about the situation and not actually training and doing anything about it. I'm like, my goodness, people. And you have the guts to moan about it. Like... Fucking train then. So I'm just going me 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 me. Like you didn't ask to be put in a situation. Fine, but you got to make the most of it now. And if you don't like it, leave the house and get murdered then. Like, what's your alternative? At some point, something's got to give, and you're gonna have to go and fight. Buffy needed that moment when you're like, well, we're gonna have to train him. Like Wood was saying, you know, if they're not ready, make them ready. Then needs to be put through their paces. And some people aren't gonna be good enough. Some people are gonna die. It's awful, it sucks, but what else can you possibly do? And moaning about it's just not going to help in the slightest. So put all that frustration into being like, well, I'm, I'm going to get through this then. I'm going to work hard and train hard. I'm going to fight and I'm going to live. And then I can enjoy the rest of my life instead of just bitching about everything. Like, driving me mad. Like, Buffy's trying her best. Give her a goddamn break. But, yeah. On balance, you can... You know, they didn't ask for any of it. I understand that, but you just, you know, deal with it. You're going to have to in a situation like this. Deal with it or die. But moaning about it is not going to change a goddamn thing. Especially when you're not always actively trying to do something about that situation. If you don't want Buffy to moan at you because you're not ready, get fucking ready. Like, you can have responsibility for yourself as well. Like, there's no prison bars on that house. You can leave. Just... Oh, God, that turned into a rant, didn't it? I wasn't expecting that. I didn't realise how much venom I had about that whole thing. But I was like, leave Buffy alone. She's got a lot on her plate. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a thing. That's my feelings and the potentials. To an extent, I understand their situation and their frustration, but something's got to give eventually. You can't just expect to, you know, sit around all day, do nothing, and then when people call you out for it, be like, oh, you're not protecting us properly. You're not doing this right. Well, I know they're young, but come on. Okay, so that's the potentials. Um, love Xander in this one I've already mentioned, and oh my god, his eye is gone. It's just gone. I mean, that ain't growing back. I mean, if it grows back, then that's kind of quite a weird revelation. I would have loved Anya to have been in this episode, to have seen the impact of that, but I'm sure we'll get that later on down the line. Um, maybe that can change things for her and Xander, and they'll get back together. Um, so yeah, I feel like they put Xander in that position to give that nice speech about Buffy and everything just so they could really bring him down by losing the eye. And like, well, that's what you get for standing up for her. I hope that's not where they go with it, though. I hope he doesn't start doubting her now because he's lost his eye. Like, you've lost an eye? Well, tell it to Jenny Callender. Oh, wait, you can't. She's dead. Tell it to Joyce. Oh, wait, you can't. She's dead. We've all been in this battle. People have had worse fates. Um... But yeah, that sucked, and that like, little shot of him in the hospital and Willow there holding his hand, and just the parallels there to becoming part two when Willow was in the hospital, then Xander was there. <laughs> They've just come so far, and 
I love Xander's growth in particular. Um, I love it when they highlight that, and this episode did such a brilliant job with it. Um, so, yeah, things are always going to get worse before they get better. You know, we're still building up four episodes after the season. Things are going to get really, really crazy and awful. So, yeah, that's kind of a permanent change, I guess. Unless Willow can do some magic eye spells. I don't know if there's a spell for that um, in, in the book somewhere, you know. Habeus, Ius, Growus, Bacchus, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoyed Xander and his defense of Buffy in this one. Hopefully that wasn't just setting him up for a fall and then everyone turns on him because like, well, Xander lost his eye. You're not ready for this. We're not ready for this. We're all going to die. But we'll see. I can also understand if that is their point of view, but I think that would be frustrating. Um, so, yeah, we had that. Andrew, again, I'm actually enjoying the comedy he brings to things because they're not making it that's all he's about. And he's actually kind of somewhat learned a bit from the events of Storyteller. Um, he wasn't too in everyone's face about things. I, I liked him. Again, it's just when it's one character, not three of them acting exactly the same. I can, I can easily deal with it. Um, and what was it he got annoyed at someone for saying? And he was like, Xander! Like, all these things going on, like the first and everything, and the thing that really got Andrew upset was um, talk about some pop culture thing, wasn't it? Um, oh, Godzilla. It's about Matthew Broderick and Godzilla, which was a very funny line. Um, and then Xander having to correct her because Andrew got upset about it. And, Zan and then Andrew crying at Xander's speech. Absolute mood. So I liked that. That was really funny, and I am enjoying Andrew a lot this season. So well done, Andrew. Um, you're a real one. You're probably going to get horribly, horribly cut into little pieces in the finale when the big battle happens, but you do you, buddy. Um, and then, yeah, we've got a bit with Wood as well. I liked that um, her, his, him and Buffy are still kind of on decent terms after the events of the last episode. That was good. Um, I think he understands the importance of her fight, what she needs to do for it. That's why he fired her. Gives her even more time to kind of prepare and focus on the mission. Um because he knows that's what's important, because that's what his mum always used to say about the mission comes first, the mission matters. Um, and the fact that he just needed to step back and kind of drop the thing with Spike for now to still be on Buffy's side in this fight. It's really nice. So I'm glad that things are somewhat okay with them. And I liked Wood kind of making the decision to let Buffy go of the job to give her more time. So that's good. I think he's kind of maybe gotten over that, you know, personal hurdle now. And he needed to be addressed at some point. You know, his timing wasn't right. I don't think he was right to probably make such a fuss of it right now. But I get it, because it's his mum and everything. Um, but he's gotten over that now, I think. He has the perspective, and he did good. So I liked the little scene with him and Buffy in this one. Um, Spike and Faith. I liked, obviously, Faith showing up again. Fantastic. We kind of assumed so after the Angel episode. Um, but it was great to see her pop up and interacting with Buffy again after, like, three seasons it's been. Uh, you know, I think Faith works so well on Angel, but it is nice to see her back on Buffy because obviously that's where the character started and to see her interact with Buffy and Giles and everyone again was an absolute delight. I really liked the relationship she had with Spike, actually. I thought those two bounced off each other very, very well because um, they've both kind of been, you know, the villain of a season. Um, they've both done some horrible, horrible stuff, some unforgivable stuff that they may not quite forgive themselves for ever. Um, but they've also kind of worked to seek redemption and they're both still on that path to redemption. Um, they're both on, you know, on the good side now, fighting the good fight. So there's a lot of parallels between the two of them that I quite enjoy. And I like seeing them kind of bounce off each other about that. Have a bit of a joke and a laugh. Um, they're both kind of the ones who need to, and, you know, by choice, are keeping themselves away from the rest of the group a lot of the time because Spike, you know, he was afraid that the first was going to keep controlling him so he kind of isolated himself from everyone so he couldn't hurt them, chain him up at times and everything. Faith is just making the choice to stay away from everyone um, because of, you know, her time in prison and stuff. So I like how similar those two actually kind of are and I think that's why they got on so well. Obviously they had a very bad start with Faith attacking him for being a vampire and stuff, but I liked that introduction as well, Buffy like coming in and thumping her. Oh, I didn't know that was you, Faith. Mm. Okay. Uh, and yeah, just like they show like how far Xander's come, you know, they also showcased how far Spike and Faith have come. You know, can you even imagine them if um, they'd interacted in like Lover's Walk, for example, in season three, you know, how different Spike and Faith were 
at that point in Buffy to where they are now, you know, it would have been a completely different relationship between the two of them, I think. So just to see how grounded those two are now um, is really, really fun. And to get a mention of Angel as well, to see Buffy talk about Angel for a bit was nice. Um, and the fact that Buffy is still obviously not Faith's number one fan, and you can understand why, um, after, you know, what Faith did with her and Riley in season four. Um, you know, if Buffy never forgave Faith truly and was never a fan of her, you know, I'd completely get it because Faith did some awful, awful stuff to her. Um, but again, the mission comes first, the mission's what matters. So while Buffy will make these digs at Faith and, um, may not be particularly polite to her for good reason, fair enough. And I think Faith is like, well, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, she's not going to bite back about it, I don't think, um, because she knows that she was in the wrong and she did some awful stuff. Um, but when it came down to it, you know, Faith was like, well, I get the vibe that you just want me to go. Is that what you want? And Buffy's like, well, no, um, because she needs as many fighters as she can get. Um, and I think, you know, unlike Wood, who... Understandably, you know, using the word petty makes it seem like I'm attacking him and everything, but understandably he was quite petty with the whole Spike situation during a time like this. Um, I think Buffy can kind of put aside any vendettas and wants for revenge or whatever um, to fight the good fight right now, so she needs to keep Faith around. Um, because with Faith being out of prison and stuff, you know, she's an easy target for the bringers now, so it makes sense they bring her back. And I liked Willow trying to suggest she be the one to go back and actually soften the blow of Faith's arrival. But Faith is like, not big on hospitals, which is a nice kind of thing as well with her coma and everything. So yeah, I really enjoyed having Faith back around again because I absolutely adore her as a character. I think she's so, so interesting. Um, and you know, they've done some great stuff with her on Angel as well, but you always have that niggling thing like you could do more with her character by actually bringing her back on Buffy now and seeing what's going on. So the fact that she's going to be around is very great news to me. I really love seeing her. Um, and, you know, who knows where Buffy and Faith's, you know, relationship may go from here now that she's back. It gives them a chance to, I think, probably sit down and talk about it. But also, I don't blame them if they don't talk about it because it's a lot of painful shit. And again, is it really the time right now? Probably not. Um, so, yeah, I enjoyed that. And... Um, just Willow's choice to bring him back in the first place, I think, was a pretty solid one because it, it does feel like with like the first being able to take the form of all these old characters, um, getting Faith back, having Giles around a lot more this season than he was in season six, um, all that kind of thing. It does feel like, oh, here's some of Buffy's best bits and best characters coming back for the end. Um, even like the first themselves, you know, already, we're already in the show in season three. Um, so it's nice and nostalgic, I think, as we approach the end to be like, here's some of our greatest characters, like one last hurrah, everything like that. So I really, really loved what they're doing with it. Um, Nathan Thillian as Caleb, I think could be an interesting threat to see what goes next with him and his manipulation by the first, or maybe not manipulation, because he just seems like he's evil anyway. Um, Xander, oh my God, like, see what happens with that. I want to say, oh, he'll be one to watch, but that seems a bit inappropriate, really. Um, but he didn't see that coming. So yeah, uh, that was good. I liked what they did with Wood in his little scene as well. Um, showing how far Xander's come was nice. Having Faith back and her relationship with Spike. I really liked the parallels between those two and their stories. Um, Buffy and Faith interacting, kind of needing to put things aside right now. Liked everything with that. I thought the idea running through the episode of like impulses, wants, needs, fetishes and stuff like that. Um, my desires are unconventional. Um, I thought that was a very unique kind of theme and topic to kind of explore through the episode. Um, especially because the episode's called Dirty Girls, um, which I think, you know, um, it comes from what Caleb was saying as well, talking about all these tainted women and everything because he's a bit of a dickhead. Um, so again, it's just kind of another thing, you know. Um, there's a lot of implications sexually, you know, about the world, dirty, dirty girls, all that jazz. So that kind of ties into the whole theme as well. So interesting time to kind of do that. Um, but yeah, I liked that kind of idea behind it. And uh, the potentials. 
we'll see if they can get in gear, but I didn't like some of their attitude in this one, let's just say that. That was a bit aggravating and just... Maybe they're just actively doing it on purpose because I they want us to root for them all to die because <laughs> it's going that way. Apart from um, the schoolgirl, um, I can't remember what her name is now, um, but the other the other episode she was like, oh, hi, Principal Wood. Um, her, I really like her. I think she's very wholesome. But apart from that, I'm happy to see them all go, to be honest. Anyway, uh, we did lose a few, so nice. Anyway, uh, very good episode. Really enjoyed this one. Look forward to seeing where things are going to be taken now. Only four episodes left, which is sad. But yeah, we're in a very interesting spot with all these characters coming back, with things escalating, a lot of tension in the air. Still a lot of it unaddressed. I'm sure that will change within the next few episodes. So yeah, really great stuff. Next reaction will be to the next episode of Buffy. And until then, thanks for watching.